Uh, today we're going to be uh, looking at this question that is up on the screen right now, but first I would like to uh, give uh, Twitch a thank you for completely fucking up the uh, dashboard, making it impossible, and or very difficult at least, to figure out what you're doing, and of course they changed it. They did give a warning, to be fair, but I mean, you know, just a warning that you're going to hurt someone is still wrong to hurt them. Uh, and it is, um, they are evil, they are bad, someone should go out and kill them. So if you're watching the stream and you're not really interested in the topic, please go kill somebody from Twitch. Obviously, that is probably a joke. Uh, in all seriousness, the dashboard, I did figure it out, but I think the um, change was unnecessary. The change to dark mode for everyone uh, was stupid. And um, in general, I just think that uh, this is part of a larger trend of uh, companies uh, deliberately harming their users in the name of uh, you know, site improvement. Um, because they really don't, they're not really improving their site, they're just breaking it for the people who are using it. Seems to be a, a sort of a constant among companies, and I think, let me see, what, we're now at 1 minute and 15 seconds of the stream, so I'll stop whining, and now we'll get to the stuff that the stream's actually about, which is also not, not, not angry stuff, but it's p pretty dull, actually pretty dull. Okay, so, um, this, uh, open data question here is how to find the country with the northernmost population. I actually did some work on this using uh, GeoNames, and uh, that result is in my Git, and I haven't published it yet, uh, but I plan to publish it shortly. It turns out there's actually a, um, there's actually a kind of a problem using GeoNames in the sense that you can really only get the populations of populated places, which sounds like it's fine, except to GeoNames, populated places means urban areas, which is different from uh, what we're looking for, which is anywhere people live, even in sort of r rural areas. So how do we uh, how do we uh, solve this uh, problem and deal with the rural areas? Well, I watched a wonderful webinar la yesterday from CDAC, and uh, th this is it. This is CDAC, and they have a gridded population of the world collection uh, that is in their fourth uh, generation or whatever. Um, I actually have downloaded copies of this, but I think just to be really, really sort of start at the very beginning. Uh, I'm gonna, there's two things we're going to need. One is the uh, poppy, and this is data is broken down to the uh, 30 second mark, 30 seconds of, um, of arc. So that means about one kilometer squared at the equator and less as you go further away from the equator. So that's just how they chose to grid it. It's not really a great way of gridding things because it's not an equal area gridding, but it works. Okay. So getting to the data, data collections, and kind of wish I had, uh, I do have copies in case I can't get to it. Unfortunately, the government, um, much like uh, big companies, uh, hates you, and they don't just hate you at th sort of the big level of, you know, destroying your dreams and turning the country into a big mess. They hate you at every single level possible. So here, and this is Columbia University, but still they're affiliated with NASA, so it counts. Um, and so this, they get very, very difficult to find, and they'll tell you, you know, we have data, and if you have to prove they have data, they'll give you this URL that says, see, we have it right here, and make you feel stupid. But, oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, this is getting worse. Okay, clearly we shouldn't make fun of the government while we're using one of their sites. Um, but the URL, there's really very, there we are, this is what I was looking for. Uh, there's little or no way to get to it, so kind of sucks. Uh, at least I think this is what I was looking for. Um, let's see, I think we can go down population, we're looking for population data. And, yeah, this is... Mm, we're looking for V4, actually. Oh, there we are, basic demographic. This actually isn't bad. Um, this is this piece of data here is actually useful. It's not what we need, but it is not bad. What we're looking for here is the population count. Um, overview, consistent with national. And I think this is the one we, we want. And let's see, yeah. So this is what's going to tell us how much population there is in each sort of uh, 30 second by 30, 900 arc second square uh, piece. And the national identifier grid, this was the thing I was missing earlier to use the population density. Uh, we have to ask uh, for each little point that they give us a population for, what country is it in? 
Now it turns out that's not, there are sometimes two countries in a given uh, grid. Uh, but <coughs> according to the webinar yesterday, uh, whatever country they put here in the, in the national identifier grid is the same country that they're reporting population for. And it turns out, um, I unfortunately don't have a link to the, uh, to the presentation. It might not be up yet. Uh, they're going to put it on YouTube. But it turns out it's actually very difficult to uh, figure out where people are, where they live. And it even sort of uh, depends on like what time of day you look, because in the afternoon people might be at work, and in the evenings they might be at home. And, and even on the weekends they might be somewhere else. Um, so, so, so quantifying population by location is not that easy. I mean, the U.S. government has done it by, you know, by your home address. That's s what the census does. And we actually have a fairly good census. I mean, everything else about our government sucks. But our census department, we get a pretty good idea of how many people there are, at least how many people there are uh, living legally in the United States and, and who have homes. Um, and even if you don't think that's a great uh, estimate that we have, it's a lot better than we have for these, these other countries have. In many, many cases, they don't collect statistics themselves. Uh, you know, we ha they have to these guys have to use like satellite records and uh, approximate lighting and stuff, none of which is 100% accurate. But it's actually better than nothing. So I'm going I'm to say that. Um, so we're going to get the population count. This actually gives projections uh, from 2000 to 2020. We're going to use 2020 because we're right, sort of right on top of that right now. Uh, but of course, you could figure out centers of population going back all the way to 2000. Probably there's other data here that can go back further. Um, and then if you wanted to, you could map them, animate them, whatever the hell you wanted to do with them. But I don't want to do that, so I'm not going to. Now, you are required to log in. And I actually... F see, this is what happens when you uh, do all your stuff on a different machine. Uh, I actually do have a login to this. Let me see if I can... I can't find it, obviously, but I mean, you know. What, what do you expect? All right, I'm going to try to look it up now. Boy, I have really good passwords, which are really bad in this case. Um, they're really bad because I have to... For some reason, I can't cut and paste between... Um, can't cut and paste between uh, my virtual machine and my real machine, so... Um, I actually have to just type it in and remember it and type it in, which I think... Now I can save it. Beautiful. Um, now I was originally going to, by the way, just uh, download this... Um, I was going to just use the copies I had on my main machine. But I, I, I sort of really want to see... I really want you to see how these... For me, how these projects start, uh, you know, from the very beginning. I mean, I did, did cheat a little bit because we went all the way... You know, we, I happened to know where this data was, and I obviously had the question... But, but I mean, let me start as sort of as deeply as possible. Um, I think I'm going to want all years combined. File format. Okay, hang on. There's a GeoTIFF. Okay. Single year GeoTIFF resolution. We're going to get the highest resolution possible, which is 30 seconds. Oh, and you can actually get like this. And they're going to zip these together for us. Now, let me actually be nice to them and to us, because I know I already have all this data. And let's just get the one we want, year 2020. So, we're going to go ahead and do a right-click, open link in new tab, and this little button here should show us that we're downloading stuff. And boy, this might take longer than I expected. While we're doing that, let's go back over here. I am logged in, but it doesn't know that yet. Oh, actually, I need to be over here. Wait, where'd I go? Yeah, National Identifier Grid. And so we need to download that. That's a much smaller... Uh, see this nice and pretty color show you what uh, that looks like? Um, data download. And these are going to be in number format, but we're going to look at that later. We will need to convert them at some point to actual country names, but that's actually fairly minor. So we're going to go to GeoTIFF, again, at the highest resolution possible. And in this case, select all is the same as this. So we're going to create download. And we're going to go over here. And we're going to download it. Um, so the very first time I did this, I had to um, actually I downloaded multiple ones, and I unzipped them. But that's one step we can actually save here. Okay, now, 
I guess we've got five. It's not really going to be five minutes, I don't think. Um, well, we've got the National Identifier Grid, so let's go ahead and look at that while we're waiting for the other download. Now, of course, I could use the shell anywhere I wanted to, um, but I will use it here in Emacs because it's easier for you guys to see. And my policy is usually to correct, create a directory of the day. So we're going to do sort of the junk work here in this directory called 2019-1204. And I'm hoping the downloads are going to be just, there they are. And let's see, one of them has a part. One, okay, right. Um, so it's going to be downloads. We're just going to move it into this directory, the National Identifier Grid, here. Okay. And now, let's get some information about it. So how can we get some information about this? Well, we use GDAL info. Shiny. Um, oh yeah, I forgot. This is a zipped file because it actually, well, let's... Un it's not a TIFF file by itself. It actually has a TIFF file in it and some other good stuff. So let's unzip. Not a problem. And now, let's look for GDAL info on the TIFF file. Okay. And this is maybe one of the problems of using the font this big, but I'm, ha I'm okay with it. Okay, so this is, a, because it's a half-second resolution, 360 degrees is 43,000... It's actually 21,600 minutes of arc, but since we're going to 30 seconds of arc, the width is going to be 43,200. Uh, there's uh, 360 degrees going across the globe, 180 going up and down. So that's 43,200 by 21,600. This gives you a lot of interesting information that we don't really want right now. Um, I mean, it does get some information here. The, 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 the thing is, we don't really like it in this format. The TIFF format... I don't know how to read it. It's compressed, as it says here, compression LZW. Uh, and I could probably figure out how to uncompress it and stuff with Perl, but I'm very lazy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert it to a format that's much easier uh, for me to use. And that's with GDAL convert, I think. Uh-oh. Oh, oh GDAL translate is the magic name. Um, of course, I'm cheating here because I know I happen to know how I'm going to run this command because I've done it in, on my other machine. Um, Um, and so you can do a man GDAL translate to see all the things it can, it can do. Um, the output format is going to be called EHDR, and I'm going to explain that in just a minute. Uh, and the output type, wow, I really need to, do, I need to do a little bit better than that, what I'm doing here. Okay. Um, and the output type is, now you'll notice that the input type here, I mean the type of the original is int 16, and we really do need to copy that. We do, we're going to be doing a 16-bit integer. Um, and then the other things I need, wow, I'm really bad at that. Okay, I'm going to try one more time to go off of this screen into my real machine without losing Emacs. Oh, that worked. Okay. Okay, that's it. Okay, so we need to say what we're going to translate, and that is um, National Identifier Grid TIFF. Um, I don't know if there actually is a proper uh, extension for uh, eHeader. I'm just going to call it .tiff .ehdr. If this is Unix, multiple extensions are not an issue. This is going to take a few seconds, as you'll see right there. Input file sizes, blah, 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 blah. So then you might ask, what is the format of um, what is the format of the output file? Why have I created it like this? Okay, well the first thing uh, we need to know is that uh, int 16 means there are two bytes for each uh, t 16 bits or two bytes for each data value, um, and of course we know there are 43,200 times 21,600. Uh, pieces of data, and each of them takes two bytes. So the total amount of data here, w unless you really, you know, uncompress it or something, is going to be a 1.866 uh, billion, 1.8 gigabytes. So now, let's see. Wow, it's the same number. That's not surprising. Uh, this format that we're using uh, is a fairly tight format. It's not text or anything, but it is uncompressed. And it, this basically means that every two bytes represents one piece of data, and it just goes across column and then row. So the first column is the first few bytes, 
the second column we start at, because there are 43,200 uh, columns in a row, and there's two bytes per uh, column, uh, 86,400 or something is where we would hit the, uh, the next row. Okay, great, Groovy. Um, so now, does it get any worse? And the answer is, of course it does. Um, let's see. Okay, uh, yeah, that's fine. Now we're actually going to get the, po the, the, this is just the national grid data. This just tells us what country a given, uh, a given point is in. Now we're going to actually get the, the population count data. And uh, before I forget, um, population count, and this does need to be unzipped, I believe. It doesn't matter if it does or doesn't, I'm going to do it. Okay. And there we go. And actually this only has two files, the TIFF and the TIFF README. And uh, let me, this is going to take a little bit, let me explain real quick what's, uh, what I wanted to say. Um, you'll notice that if we go back over here to the CSUN site, they have something called population density and population count. So that sort of seems redundant because, you know, you, you know how big a, a square arc second is or how big 900 arc square arc seconds is. It does change depending on your latitude, but you can compute it. So why do they have such a, what, what appears to be a very simple translation of the data? And the answer here is actually um, the population density they use is based on the amount of land in a given 900 arc second squared uh, you know, chunk. So it is not it is not easily computable. I mean, it is if you happen to know the amount of land in a given arc second, which I think they provide somewhere. Uh, but but so the density is really not the same. You know, it's not the same thing as the count. There's a very small amount of land in a given uh, little by 30 by 30 arc second uh, square. Uh, the density could be very high, and if there's a lot of land, it could be very low, even if the population count is the same. Because we're looking to find the uh, center of population, the population density is not of particular interest to us. Um, uh, it, it's not a bad thing to have. I, I do have a copy of it on my other machine, but not, uh, not of interest to us right now. Okay, so what do we need to do with this one? Well, pretty much the same thing we did with the other one. We're going to convert it from the compressed TIFF format. Oh, sorry, we need to do... We're going to convert it from this... Um, Mm. Yeah, one nice little thing they have here is the zip files are GPW hyphen, the uh, actual files we need. But there's a lot of, you know, sort of ancillary information here, but um, that's not what I meant to do. Okay. Sorry, I, I do need to actually specify it's underscore V4 population count TIFF. Okay. So this doesn't seem very exciting to us. And, and again, this is compressed um, with LZW. So I don't want it like that. I want to uncompress it. The only real difference here you're going to notice is how is the data stored. We're now uh, storing data. It's slow 32. There's somewhere in here that actually tells you what the minimum and maximum values of the data are. Um, but it's like 627,000 to something. But, but let's not. Um, let me see if I can find it, actually. I'm actually sort of surprised. There's actually, um, there's actually a way to, uh, find, um, yeah, GDAL info should be telling me the min and max values in this, uh, in this, uh, piece of data, but it's not. Okay. And this, you'll notice the big difference here is it's a float 32. We're going to be storing it in, uh, 32 uh, bits, which is four bytes, instead of um, int 16, which we did for the other one. So that's, that's sort of the big difference here. Um, so let's go ahead and go back to our GDATE translate here. And we can cut and paste. We're going to have to change it, obviously. Okay, and this time what we're changing is... What we're translating is... E header is the output format, but the output type now has to be float32. And of course, we're the output we're going to call it population count dot tiff dot e header. And actually, we're not going to call it that. This will take a few seconds. Okay. 
And because I'm extremely lazy, I don't really want to refer to them by these huge names, the e-header files. Um, so what I'm going to call them here is uh, population count dot tiff dot e header. We're going to make a symbolic link to pop count dot e header. Much easier for me. Um, and then for the uh, the uh, thing that maps dots to national grid numbers, um, tiff dot e header. We're going to call that uh, nat grid dot e header or nat gird. Okay. Okay, super. So now we're all set up. We have the data. We have it uncompressed. And we have it in the format where we kind of understand what it is. Um, what's next? I don't know. I have a pizza? No, I can't have pizza. Um, well, the next part, of course, is to deal with the data and see what, what we're looking at. Um, and to be honest with you, I've not looked at this data for a while, so I don't remember the exact format. Uh, I mean, int 16, I'm pretty sure they do the high byte first. In other words, uh, we look at... Um, we look at uh, the uh, we look at the first byte, multiply by 256, add the second byte to get the integer value. Um, float 32. Um, yeah, that's that's actually interesting. I don't know how they do that. Uh, um, Perl actually has an unpack function. Uh, that might be able to sort of automatically handle it, but of course we're going to have to check to make sure it's handling it correctly. Now, um, if I have QGIS here, I will be freaking amazed. I am freaking amazed, guys. Okay, but now before we do any of that, previously on, um, what I'm going to do here is why don't we just look at sort of the pop count in QGIS, probably because I'm going to run out of memory. But let's see what happens. And this is just always happens... Uh, I've had enough tips. Okay. And this is just... Oh, it's not a valid layer and cannot be added to the main... Well, screw you. Unfortunately, um, QGIS does not really work well unless you have a much wider screen. Um, so I'm not happy about the fact that eHeader does not have a, uh, a format. Um, oh, I know what's wrong. Um... One issue is that if you actually notice that when I did the translate uh, of population count um, to eHeader files, you'll notice there's actually an eHeader aux.xml file here. Uh, and that is, it's actually very easy to look at that file. It's not even a, it's not a big deal at all. Um, and it just has some auxiliary sort of uh, metadata that we, uh, I don't need because I happen to know what, what I'm doing, but, uh, but uh, they would kind of... Uh, that uh, that um, that QGIS would need, and see, this is actually really, really, really basic. So let me go ahead and uh, fix that by. First of all, I don't trust QGIS to stay open, so I'm going to exit it. It's going to complain at me. It didn't complain at me. I'm kind of surprised. Okay. So the other thing we need to do now is uh, we need to link. Uh, to pop count. Okay. While we're at it, we might as well do the one for the national grid data. And this is one of the problems about you know creating sim links all over the place. Um, okay, and now QGIS should be okay with it. So yeah, let's look at the pop count. Come on, baby needs a new pair of shoes. Okay. Layer is not valid. Cannot be added to the... Okay, well... Let's go ahead and do it with the original file. I'm not crazy about that, but... Uh, this is, again, we're really just sort of looking at it for fun. But this is... We're going to process it with a Perl script. This is not going to be... Um, I don't. I still don't want the TIFF. I still want the eHeader. Let's see if it likes this any better. If not, we can even go to the TIFF, although that will kind of be admitting failure. Authentication system disabled, but... Yeah, this is... I can make this smaller, the window, but it's just going to get ugly because it, QGIS really is kind of a hog when it comes to window space. 
So let's see if this helps any. Okay. Um, now what I would expect to see here is a map of the world. So clearly that is not happening. Let's see if sometimes you have to zoom in or zoom out. Zoom to layer. Yeah, that didn't help at all, did it? Okay, well. Well, well, well. This was not supposed to happen. Let me take a quick look at the um, attributes of this layer. Oh, it doesn't have attributes. Okay, so either I screwed something up really badly, which is probably what happened. Um, let's see. Or I've messed it up so badly that QGIS no longer recognizes it uh, as, a, uh, as a file. Okay, hopefully not that one. But you know what? Let's just cheat a little bit more and just look at the actual TIFF file, which QGIS better deal with. There is a new QGIS. That's what we're supposed to be seeing. Um, that's a little strange, because that's not really the highest value. Uh, this is, uh, this looks horrible, so we're going to go ahead and go over here to learning a little bit about QGIS. I mean, I am. I don't, you might be, I don't know, I don't care. Um, let's see there, usually I can do a open attribute table. Properties. Yeah. So, Let's see. We got to be a little bit careful here. The min and max given here, zero to three hundred ninety-one, is actually to the second to the ninety-eighth percentile. It's not the complete min and max. Um, so why don't we actually get the full? It's going to be something like zero to six hundred twenty-seven thousand something. So amazingly high number is the large, the large part of it is. Um, or not. There we go. Took a second. 627,597 is the biggest number of people living in a uh, 30 by 30 arc second square. Um, it turns out now the gray color makes it look really terrible, so let's use signal band pseudo color classify. Uh, oh, we're still using the, uh, the other. This is actually better because there's very few population grids that are up to the total, the real max of 690, uh, yeah, so we're back to cumulative count. We do min max, um, and that should, that, that should change this number. Um, let me, let me quickly, the problem is it's, it turns out that you can't really use a, um, Okay, hang on. There's a way to do this. Um, oh, apply. Here we go. Uh, no, that didn't work. Um, color interpolation linear. But I want the real min and max to be used. Oh, you know what? I think they're... Yeah, because this is like... This version of GIS is a little bit different than the one I use. Okay, hang on. I'm not happy with this. I'm going to cancel this. And I'm going to make a little bit of more of a change here. Um, oh, you know, I usually don't keep my layer panel up. Uh, so we'll just do this. Properties. Single band, pseudo color, cumulative count, no. Min, max. Full, actual, extent. Apply. Don't know why we're not getting those numbers like we had before. And it might be that I just, um, and it might be that I just somehow, let's, okay. I think I'm going to have to go from multi-band color back to single band pseudo, no, stop keeping my values. Um, boy. It turns out using the min max is a bad idea, but I just want to show you that, that we can actually do it. Oh, here we are, load. There we go. So now, of course, if we were to classify this, and we'll, we'll actually go all the way into, um, 
equal interval because there's a fine 255 is the best we can do by the way in terms of equal interval and we want to invert it because we want sort of higher populations to be red lower populations to be blue so if we do this uh, it grows into sort of a beautiful um, you know actually this is funner if you do random colors it looks weird but it's fun okay um, so now this is going to show us basically uh, you know, the first layer is going to be zero, then it's going to be zero to two, four, seven, zero, four, nine, four, one, all the way up to six, two, seven, five, nine, seven. The problem is you're going to see almost all of them are going to be this color here because uh, there's very few pieces of land that go this high. It's sort of like an exponential growth there. Uh, so let's go ahead and apply this sucker. Thumbnail is all, you know, one of these low green colors. Let's see if we can, um, see, okay here. And you can see very few places in the world that are not this color because there are very few places in the world uh, that have that high of it, that have anything other than a very low population count. Uh, so we can go back here now and do this correctly. Um, and using the second to 98th percentile, what's amazing is the 98th percentile is only 391, even though the max value is over a thousand times bigger than that. So now if we classify uh, your mama, random colors, let's see, that's fine. Class is five. That's fine. What's wrong? Oh, it's not, I don't want mode continuous. Um, we and so I want cumulative. I'm gonna go ahead. And that's weird. Load. Okay, good. Zero to three ninety one. Why is this continuous? I don't want it to be continuous. Um. And that's an estimate, by the way, of the, um, so why is it insisting that I be, oh, you know what, I think I found this is a bug, actually. Um, this is actually, I think, a bug in QGIS that I found earlier today. Um, <coughs> and I'll show you how to fix it in just a sec. Cumulative count, okay, so this is what we want. Um, and it does take a while, and I don't, there should be some sort of indication it's doing something, but sometimes there's not, except for the fact you can't move the scroll bar. So hopefully this will do what I want. Cumulative count, actual, how do we get to 627? Estimate. Oh, wow. Uh, we're going to use the actual numbers. So 0 to 627, that's not too much worse. Um, If this had still remained the way, uh, like continuous, you would have to go to another color and then change it back to random. For some reason, when you do random colors, it gets creeped out by some of the options. Okay, so we're now going to have a classification of uh, these colors, just to see how it looks like. Um, and if we look at it over here, you can see there's much more of a spread of colors here because, uh, because we're using a much more reasonable scale. Um, another thing we could do, which is totally not anything to do with what we're doing. Um, I think there's a way to use, um, uh, maybe not. Uh, there might have been a way to use like logarithmic or something. So, you know, you could still see the uh, the smaller areas spread out correctly. Well, now that we're doing uh, just, you know, sort of this, um, now we can actually use more of a, uh, a spectrum in here somewhere, spectral. Now we can use more of a spectral, invert, classify, and we can use more than five, nope, it's equal interval. Uh, well, let's see if we can do continuous, let's see what that does. And by the way, despite the fact we said continuous, you'll notice it is not really continuous. Um, because I guess classify decides that when you classify, it's gonna be, I wonder, hang on. I wonder, wonder, wonder. What if we get rid of this and just apply like this? Is it really continuous or does it, it gets really unhappy with us. So let's not do that. So equal interval, spectral, and 255 is the biggest number you can put in here, by the way. Um, so low populations will be blue going all the way up to high populations in red, sort of a typical heat map. Apply. Uh, here's our thumbnail. 
And let's take a quick look at this now. And this is sort of how we kind of, you know, extremely highly populated here. Uh, little pieces of high population here in the United States, uh, Africa. Uh, but, you know, a lot, of, a lot of the world is fairly un, not very heavily populated, not very densely populated. Let me get rid of that. Um, so there was one other thing I wanted to do, and I forgot what it was. Um, okay, so that shows us the various different um, values as they go up from uh, 0 to above 6. So this actually, the last value here is actually 627 and above, but there's so few values there, you see very little dark red on the... Uh, on the scale. Now I guess we could also go here and do random just to see the, you know, I think we did that earlier though. Every time. Oh yeah, the one thing I want to look at here, so this is just kind of weird looking. I don't know if the legend, um, okay. Nearest neighbor, neither saver, oversampling, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So, So this is how the uh, population count looks. A much simpler thing to look at is the uh, is the images of the of the the national grids. This a little bit of a surprise here for you, mm, you know whatever. Um, I will use the TIFF file because apparently using the non-TIFF file I need to do some work with that. Okay, authentication system disabled. Blah blah blah. Um, this is ugly grayscale. We can fix that. Uh, 232 um, spectral equal interval and this is because it's national boundaries we really do want random colors here um, and I'm pretty sure that even if I even if I did the true min and max it's still going to be 23 to 840 although I don't really know where 840 is coming from there's only like 200 countries in the world. Oh, 4 to 999. Well, still don't know how they're numbering the countries. There is, there is, a, we will be able to find that out. There is a place to find that out. Um, but let's see, classify. Oh, I don't want spectral. I want random colors. Classify, apply. And hopefully, you know, as you can see from the thumbnail, this is sort of a more typical map of the world. But there's actually something sort of interesting about it. Um, remember we said that we're looking at this data with 30 arc second precision. That means that in this map, they had to assign uh, a country named every 30 arc second square, which means ultimately, that was kind of cool. Um, you can sort of already see it, but if you really zoom in here, wow, you are really making me work for this. If you sort of zoom in here, you'll see that very intentionally, uh, these boundaries are not, um, they are not smooth. They could be a lot smoother than this, but because they had to break stuff down to the nearest 30 arc seconds, they have these grids are actually, uh, these it's either one square is solid, one color. So that's sort of the thing we're looking for. Okay. Oh, hello. A uh, little bit harsh there. Uh, not very nice. I'm not going to... And you're gone now, so... Uh, no, this is Unix, and this is not Unix circa 1990. This is pretty damn good Unix. Actually, I don't care if you think it's good or not. Um, okay. So now what we're going to do here... I wonder what that comment was made. Um, anyway, so now what we need to do here is we need to actually read the files, uh, the EHDR files that I've created, and that will give us both the uh, national sort of name and it'll give us the population count. So now, I'm going to put this in BC Git Maps, but since this isn't synced to my GitHub, we're getting sort of further and further away between my personal copy, which is the GitHub copy, and this copy. I do need to fix that at some point. Um, actually, I already have a center of world, so I actually have some computation here. Um, and COC means center of country, COW means center of world. And it turns out that uh, finding the center of the world is, it gives you a really sort of ugly answer. But let's go ahead and do pop center. 
It's a Perl script, so we say it like this. I always like to require my user, uh, my library there. And we're going to be opening two files. And uh, the user on this machine is named user, which is nice if you ever want to sort of generalize. And they're going to be popcount.ehdr and natgrid. Dot .ehdr, I think. Now these files are way too big to load into memory. Uh, one of them is uh, almost a gigabyte and the other one's two gigabytes. So what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, what C programmers call lseek, uh, what uh, uh, Perl programmers call seek. We're going to look inside the files uh, using that. So um, this is kind of ugly because um, Unfortunately, at the sort of the top left corner of the grid, which we're going to start, uh, it's water, which is no country, and there's no one living there. Uh, so those numbers are sort of inherently uninteresting. Um, let's see. Now, we know there are um, 4,300 times 2,600 pieces of data. I could, in theory, create a list, but that's actually really inefficient. So, equals zero. I'm going to just use a regular everyday for loop. Um, 4,300. Okay. And now, the, the remember, these files are, have different sizes. So, for... to look up the seek command. I think I do, actually. Um, I, I could do a man pearl, a uh, man pearl funk, actually, but it turns out um, you're going to have a difficulty seeing it. So let's just do this. Um, seek file handle position whence. Um, I wonder if you can do a straight read, actually. Well, let's go ahead and write this down. Let's go ahead and do a seek. So let's, um, so in file A that has the population count, um, the position will be this is a good way of forgetting to do anything. Alright, uh, pop count E header. That was not helpful. Um, GPW. There should be a fault. Uh, never mind. Population count rev 11. Dot tiff. Dot e header. Pretty sure this is a. Uh, oh, that's actually a float. That I think that's for. Um, I think what we're going to find is that's four bytes per piece of data. Uh, right, four bytes. So we will be reading. We'll be seeking to four times dollar sign i, and whence is I think going to be just seek set. We're going to set it to that position. We could also just move forward four characters, whatever the hell. Um, this is pop count, and then we need to do a read of the four bytes that are there for every piece of data. And let's see if there's a. Let's see, I was hoping this would be a little bit easier. Uh, and we just have the, the read function here, but the read, the, okay. Pull, seek, and read. Seek, read, example, that's that's really, really good. Okay. Uh, and by the way, there, is, you know, there is something called sysseek, S-Y-S-S-E-E-K, and uh, that, f you can use one or the other, but you can't actually use um, both. So we can't mix and match sys and non-sys functions. So here is a seek. Um, this, by the way, of course, because one is seek uh, seek cur, doesn't move the the sort of cursor inside the file at all. Um, and let's see. And now there's a way to read just a few bytes of data. They're not using they're using read line here, which is a little bit different. Um, And apparently is not documented in this page. Uh, awesome. Um, I 
I forgot what the tell uh, command does. Oh, tell actually tells you where you are in the file right now. Um, come on. And actually, Perl doesn't use parentheses, so some people just, I mean, you can, but it doesn't have to. Uh, reading from file, reader, okay. Yeah, here it is. Um, let's copy this code. We're going to change it, obviously. Uh, you do need a buffer, which I'm going to declare outside of this. And so this is one of the weird Perl functions that doesn't actually return something it modifies one of the values you send in, which is actually not great behavior. So in, I think, is going to be the file handle. Buff is where you're going to get the um, results. Uh, expected. Um, I'm sorry, no. Uh, this is how many bytes you want to read, which in for, for A is going to be four bytes. Okay. Um, and what this returns is not the, the buffer, it returns the number of uh, bytes read. Which we'll call B read. Um, I forget what seek returns, actually. It's kind of a good question. Um... Okay, it returns one on success, uh, false on otherwise. So we don't really need to, um, I'm bad with error checking, but we will go ahead and keep the value of what it is. We're not going to check to see if it's one or zero, though. Um, okay, so we, uh, we get, um, we, we read four bytes, and we put them in buff. Okay, so now if we were doing error checking here, If I well, you know, now I usually don't, but now that I've said I, I won't do it, I have to do it. Um, and in Perl, usually a uh, dollar sign exclamation point gives you the last error. So if this does not work properly, wait, have I got it backwards? Um, returns one on success. So. not equal to one, we did something bad. Here, if um, uh, if we read something other than four bytes, um, something went wrong. But again, if, this ca if these cases come up, it will probably mean that I really screwed something up in the coding itself, uh, because th this shouldn't happen. Okay, so now the question is that we have buff, and we're using it population count. Um, okay, there's a way to do this. It's really clever. And we're not going to use it. Okay, so now we, we need to have a value here. And this is going to be the pop count value. We'll call it p count. This is going to be wrong because this is not how uh, four place floating point integers work. But it will give us an idea of how to correct it. Um, so what we're going to do is. I think it's either ORD or CHR that gives us, um, find out. One of these converts, yes, converts characters into, um, into numbers. CHR goes the other way, it converts numbers into characters. So what we want to do here is, let's see, um, you gave us, okay. Yeah, this might be actually excessively weird. So, so this really says buff is equal to four characters, which we're going to call. This might be inefficient, by the way. Dollar sign one, dollar sign two, dollar sign three, dollar sign four. Now I just feel like I shouldn't have to do this. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take dollar sign four. Um, we're going to take the last one, 
at plus 256 times this one boobies no uh, plus 256 times 256 of this one times 256 the cube of this one but it turns out um, because of the way because there's a function called left shift that makes us a lot easier so what we do is we say dot dollar sign four plus dollar sign three left shift one plus dollar sign two left shift two plus dollar sign one left shift three uh, and I think that's correct, but let's check. And dollar sign um, shifts, and actually I've got the bytes wrong, so hang on. This will shift the bytes over by 1, giving us 90. And this will shift the bytes over by 8, which is effectively multiplying by 256. So really what I meant to do here was 8, 16, and 24. And that's going to be the P count. That's not correct, because we need to actually convert it to something. Um, so now what we can do here, it's a good time to test to see if we've actually got something. Um, there's going to be a problem with this. And the problem is going to be that the value is going to be 0 for so much of this, it's not going to be fun. OK. Now there's a couple of things we need to do. This is not going to work right away, because it's not executable and it's not in the path. Perl fix is a little alias I wrote that doesn't work. Um, well, that should really be user, not Barry Carter. Excuse me while I go... Uh, I'll go fix that. It's, uh, let me go fix that real quick. That is not cool. Um, that should really... because I, I link my... Um, username to, to uh, user and I'm trying to make this as generic as possible for everyone so um, that should really be uh, that and you can't see what I did I know that um, all right so why don't we go ahead and do this the correct way find home user bc git. I don't have a Perl directory here. Minus i name star dot pl xrs chmod plus x. So that is going to automatically set the executable byte on anything that ends in dot pl within my directory. Um, now why won't this still work? Let's see. I don't think it will. Oh, you know what? It will. Am I actually not in the... Um, wow. Somehow or another we got a... Um, Usually you have to do a rehash in the t uh, the T shell um, if you want to uh, if you want to get an, you know if you want to pick up new po programs in the path. But apparently this time it just worked. So this is going to be really ugly. So I'm going to pipe it to less. And here's what the problem is going to be. Yes, it's basically it's just zero everywhere. So how do we get around that? Well, very simply. We just skip over the zeros because we want to actually get something that's useful. And now let's do this. That didn't look cool. Um, I think we might have to not. We might have to not pipe it to less, because it's going to be a while before something actually shows up here. Um, so this is fun. Um, if we wanted to, we could actually sort of um, go into random areas, which I'm beginning to think we should do, because uh, this is clearly taking forever. Because we're basically going through like the North Pole right now. Um, This silence is brought to you by Silences Incorporated. Okay. Let's go crazy. Not in the prince sense of the word. Okay, so why don't we just do this now? Uh, we're going to have an infinite uh, for loop, but 
but I think we can be kind of nice here. And here we're just going to say, I is going to be a random number between zero and this, and of course because um, we want it to be something that's useful, um, we have to turn it into an integer. Okay, one more time. This could be so bad. And let's see. Bad reg x. Um, so that's not cool. We actually got two numbers out of it. Uh, not very helpful to us because we don't know what they mean. Uh, but we can we can start to deal with that now. We now have the the tools to deal with that. Um, so the latitude here, actually, let's say the row number here is going to be I divided by 43,200, uh, and it'll be the floor of that. Uh, so row 0 will be the first row. And the call number is going to be uh, mod uh, 43,200. Um, and I will take the floor of that. Uh, no, actually, I don't think we need to, because um, it's, already, it's already an integer. So now we can say um, row call. And then we're going to even convert that further into a latitude longitude. Um, I'm not happy about the fact that uh, something broke there, but you know, let's uh, let's we've got something going at least. And because it is random, we won't get the same results. Well, but we will get something that screws up. Um, row 1699, column 8737, uh, has a population of very large. Um, Now I'm sort of concerned that um, I messed something up. So let's go ahead and go print the actual uh, zeros as we get them. Okay, good. So the zeros have not gone bad. Okay, so it doesn't really like my reg X. So what can we do, do about that? Well, um, we can always replace this with substrings. Um, I'm not really happy with this, though. Hang on. Okay, and we will go ahead and what we're going to do is we're going to split it into an array, and we do that with the split command. So it's going to be split on any nothing, uh, and it's going to be an array called buff, and arrays and you know scalars can have the same name, and then and our check now will be. The correct way to do this would be say scalar buff is four, but saying dollar sign number buff, the highest array index is three, uh, is another way of saying that. And in this case, I will still see if there's a file error going on, but you know, whatever. And here, this is gonna become buff three. And in this case, I could even write a little bit of a loop if I wanted to, um, going backwards and then, you know, multiplying by 256. Not really worth it, though. Okay. Now, if this works, it's going to run forever. And let me get rid of the um, yeah. <laughs> let me go ahead and get rid of the zeros again. Okay, 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 okay. We got it. And I will next time pipe it to less or something. Okay, so clearly these are not the population counts or anything. Uh, let's go ahead and actually, yo, know, mama. Um, compute the latitude and longitude as well. This will give us a... We're really getting closer to trying to figure out what these numbers actually mean. And I'm pretty sure I need to divide uh, p-count by 65536 to get the real answer. Um, now, in theory, I could be just declaring these, uh, these variables as I use them, and maybe I should, but anyway. Um, so we know that 90 is going to be row 0. And we know that um, there's actually like a 0.5. We've talked about this before because it's each pixel represents a, a, row, a group of values, not just a single value. But again, uh, not a huge deal. Okay, so this means the first row, I just feel like I have to do a plus 0.5 now. Uh, so the first row, when row zero, is going to represent um, yeah, very close to 90 degrees. When row is 
is never going to get to 43,200. It's going to be 43,199, but let's say roughly this is going to be 90 minus 180, which is minus 90. So that is that is a correct thing to do. Longitude is actually quite a bit simpler. We just multiply the call number by uh, 43,000. No, 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 no. We divide it by 43,200, multiply it by 360, and add 180. And we also call it LNG. That's a call divided for that's between 0 and 1, times 360. I think that's correct. So now how does that help us? Well, now we can actually do some, some fairly decent... Um, we can see how reasonable these numbers are. I mean, right now they're not, because obviously, um, uh, because obviously we don't know how to divide them yet. Okay. This time I'm going to put it on... Oh, wow, whoa, whoa, whoa! Okay, and so the problem I have here... Um, also, I screwed up my longitude because I forgot that... Uh, I meant to say times 360. Um, this gives me a number between 0 and 360. Oh. Let's see. Uh, no, it's actually minus 180. Right, because uh, this number will go from 0 to 360, and latitudes and longitudes go from minus 180 to plus 180. Um, and... Oh yeah, and the other thing is, we do really don't need the row and column. That was just sort of a temporary thing. I'm trying to figure out what else we don't need. We probably don't need I. I'm hoping this... I want to get it all in one line, because otherwise it's really ugly. I'm hoping this will do it, and if not, we will fix it before we look at it. Yep, that's ugly, 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 too ugly. Um, we're going to go RC cola on this sucker. and do that. Much shorter. If that doesn't work, I will be annoyed. Uh, still not great, and it's partly because we have, um, it's partly because we have uh, really, really long decimals, which we can fix using sprintf. I just don't feel like doing that right now, though. Um, so... So it's going to be basically <laughs> Latin, and then no headers, man. Headers are for losers. Don't do headers. Okay, beautiful. Um, yeah, it'd be nice if I knew what these numbers meant. Um, So, yeah, one problem is this is actually a fairly far north latitude. Um, this is a fairly far west longitude. So I don't know what's there. We could find out. We probably should find out. But let's go ahead and do that. So how do we do that? Well, Google Maps to the rescue. This, this worries me a little bit, though. I think copy is... Um, yeah, I should have known that. Alright, so let's go over here to maps.google.com, which I d does, in fact, take a... Um, let's just go to OpenStreetMaps. I don't know if it takes um, latitude and longitude as an input, but, you know, if it does, we should go to that one first. I do not want to learn more. And this does have to be a comma, and I don't know if this is going to work. Okay. Well, I mean, it's on land, which is always sort of a good thing. Um, and this does look like 75 comma minus 127. Um, you know, what we're going to do here, actually, I think, um, and again, this is sort of a very oblique way of getting to the data we want. We could, in theory, just try to be smarter about this. Uh, but I'm not smart. Let's see if my hecklers have returned. Uh, no, only Lurks is in chat. Hello, Lurks, you're not a real person. I hate to tell you.
Okay. So now let's be a little bit clever here. Um, we want to find a place that has a fairly high population density. So what we're going to do here, um, we're going to take 10,000 of these suckers, print them out, and then once we get them in the little file, we're going to sort of sort them, find the highest population density, track it down and see if it really is, you know, a reasonably high population density compared to the other ones. Obviously it won't be the highest one. Um, so here what we do is this, debug, pipe to t, temp, one dot text. Isn't that a beautiful name? And here we'll have 10,000 of the suckers. I probably should have just done a redirect because it's going to take some time to print out all 10,000 values. Yeah, that was kind of a bad idea on my part there. Uh, but it, I mean, it's going pretty fast. If you look at the uh, little cursor thing here, it says bot L. Uh, you know, we're getting to 10,000 pretty quickly. I think, unless I mess that up and I put in more than 10,000 somehow. All right. Well, if we don't stop by the time we get to like 55,000, I will think about doing something. 51. 50. <laughs> All right. Let me stop this and see what the hell happened. Um... Did I go much higher than that? That should... That should stop after... Um, after 10,000. Alright, well... Alright, well... This time, we were just going to... Um, redirect. This will be faster if it works because um, it doesn't have to print out all the results. Um, and I'm wondering if it maybe it was a bad idea to use the default variable for this. Let me do this real quick. See how big this became. 50,000. Well, you know what? Hopefully this is not going to complain about me trying to load a file this big. Um... Yeah, you know what, this looks good to me. So what we want to do is we want to look at the biggest values in the third column. Uh, and they are separated by spaces, comma spaces, but also spaces. So this is sort minus k3nr temp one dot text. We only want the first few values, so let's do this. Okay, fantastic. So the biggest number we're getting here is uh, depressingly <laughs> weird. And I'll put this number in here, but I'm, this is, um, this is Siberia, pretty much. So this makes me think that maybe I've got it backwards. Um, yeah, I'm going to put this in here, but this is Siberia. This, I'm pretty sure we're in Siberia here. Not unpopulated, but not, certainly not hugely populated. Wait, did I? That wasn't right. Yep, I need to do a copy paste. Which is one of the few things I don't like about Emacs is that. Okay, now. Yeah, this is a. Uh, this is Ocumpus. This is this is northern Russia. So not great. All right. So maybe the problem is I'm I'm doing I'm using um high endian where I should be using low endian numbers. One way to check for that is to look for um, this is going to be difficult. Look for the nah, I can't even really do that. We have to just reverse the bytes, but just for fun let's look at the lowest numbers in here that are not zero. In this case that is um, Okay, and this actually looks like a much more populated place than the other one. Um, I mean, it's it's that's going to be like Minnesota, I think. Yep. One. Meta W. Seriously. Edit. 
copy. That should have been meta W. Oh, I see. I didn't select it anymore. And then paste. There we go. And this is, ooh, we're still in Russia. Was That was not a minus, apparently. No, it wasn't. Uh, but we're in a better part of Russia, kind of. Oh, actually, that might not be, that might be something that should be Russia, but isn't. Okay. All right, so I'm going to assume that I just screwed up and I, and I did the reverse of what I needed to do, but if that it still turns out to be untrue, um, we all need to look at more data here. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to just comment this line out. And we're just going to go backwards. So we're going to assume that's the low byte, that's the higher byte, that's the higher byte, and that is the highest byte at the very end. And and do we have, we did never did figure out why it wasn't stopping. So let's let me actually go back here and uh, assign a variable name to that. So now we should be. Uh, I don't know why I want to keep calling it BC pop count, but it's not what it is. And by the way, using like temp 2.txt is uh, kind of a hack. But I know what these files are, so I don't have to give them good names. And I'm not going to use them for very long. Okay, so we have that. And so now we do sort minus k3 and r, temp 2.txt, pipe to less. Okay, so this tells me that, uh, yeah, this is looking better, that one of the most populated places is going to be, uh, you know, of the 10,000 we looked at, it's going to be here and... Um, that's still fairly far north. I'm hoping we've hit like Barrow, Alaska or something. Um, I'm also hoping I'll learn how to use Emacs cut and paste one day. Escape W. Let's see what that, where that is. Not great. It's off. Oh, that's actually where I think Thule is, the city of Thule. It's a very small, here it is. It's a very small city, but it does, there are people there. Okay, so there's, there's a possibility. I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. Even maybe a probability of that. Um, so I guess I need to figure out what the hell I'm doing. Let's make sure I've got everything correct. Um, population count, e header file, that should be what I need. Um, four, I do read four bytes from it, and that's how many I get back, and then I compute them. All right, so now, of course, we're going to cheat by. Um, by looking at the national grid in this area. So, I'm gonna I'll start that over here. Um, this is the error for B. I'm gonna seek in B. Now this is 16 uh, by bit integer, so this is only two times dollar sign I. And we'll go ahead and set it over there. Um, oh, I know what's wrong. Uh, no, I don't. Because this is a random number, and this should all come through very nicely then. And it is, we are going to four times i, which is fine, because that's how much each thing takes up. So, so let's go back to what we're doing here. Uh, we are two times i seek. Um, Uh, I'm going to go totally reverse of what I did. I'm going to go ahead and actually um, uh, boy, that was a bad name. BB read equals read. Um, and 
debuff. Okay. I think maybe this time... Because it's only two bytes, I think I can actually just return the values individually. And maybe that's what I should have done with the other one, huh? Anyway. Uh, roll call that lawn count. And here we're going to say, um... Okay, actually we still need to do the ord here. The ord of bbuff0 and the ord of bbuff1. And these should be fairly limited values and they should be correspond to the, the countries that we know and hate. Uh, let me comment out this code here real quickly. And I should I could put in here if you know if these are zero because there is a lot of water on the Earth's surface, but let's let's go ahead and go crazy and uh, let's assume this is going to work. Let's do this. And I want to just look at the results myself real quick. Uh, yes, I forgot that print does that. It puts new lines into things if you do it that way. Um, 12, 0, 0, 128. I think 0, 128 is going to be the null country, but, but I don't care for right now. All right, so let me fix that up a little bit. Um, now we can use, like, dot, like this. Oh, I'm sorry, this is what my debug command does. It's a little bit different from what the print command does. Okay, so we can do dot that. Um, dot. I'll, I'll be surprised if that actually works. like that. Um, so let's just go ahead and actually construct the string using a join command. Um, row call will be one of them. Lat boom will be another one. Ord bbuff zero. And then ord bbuff one. And then just debug stir. See how that goes. Okay, 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 that worked. 0, 120, 0, 120, 0, So... Yeah, let's see if we can go ahead and... Uh, We have a three yet? No, we don't. Okay. Okay, and let's this time sort by. Um, I'm tempted to sort by the fourth. One, two, three. Yeah, let's do that. K four and not backwards. Okay, so one twenty zero is where this country is, and it's also where this country is. Uh, 140 zero is where this other country is. Boy, this is uh, kind of confusing, because uh, I don't know which countries go where. But uh, also, uh, I, I think four is the high bite. So I think what we need to do is we need to multiply. So these, these, these are actually a low Indian. Um, so what we need to do is multiply this by 256 and add this. Um, I think that's going to be the, uh, the thing to do here. In fact, is that always going to be zero? I don't know. Maybe. Okay. And this is not the greatest thing in the world to do. There are better ways to do this. 
And so this one's going to be in the it's the the last one that's going to be the the higher byte, which means it's when we multiply by 256. And then we just need to print that. And that should help us with our sorting issues and stuff too. You see pop count minus minus center minus minus debug. And we're sending it all to temp. I think we're up to four now, aren't we? Four text. It's temp four text. So it actually worked. Okay, good. And I'm pretty sure that three two seven six eight means no country. One, two, three, so we want to sort by K three N temp four dot text. And let's see if we can so country four lots of positions in country four. Let's just see if we can take one of them. And I'm going to guess this is um, Denmark. Um, I'm also going to guess that I'll never figure out uh, the Mac cut and paste system. Meta W should have worked. So, and those points are pretty close to each other, so it's sort of a good guess that this is Denmark. Uh, not that great of a guess, though, because apparently, um, oh, wait, 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 what? Because apparently this is, uh, they called this Russia, I think, or something. Yeah, and it has funny names. So that was a bad guess on my part. All right, let's see what country 12 is. Um, country 8 is this. Let's find some countries that are frickin' lower down. Apparently they named the countries from north to south for some stupid reason. Okay, so let's see where this country 24 is. It's got quite a bit of stuff in it. Ah, buongiorno, is Italy. Oh, they actually give, you, uh, give it to you both ways. Um, and we were doing um, longitude, latitude, so this is the correct one. This is somewhere else. Okay, so this is, um, this is part of Italy. And if that theorem is correct, uh, let's find another place in Italy that's as far away from this one. As we let's see if this is still in Italy here. Still 24 should still be in Italy. And it does look like it is indeed still in Italy. Okay, fantastic. So we do know we're getting some useful data out of the uh, out of the national grid. Now we want to see if we can get that same good data, or some good data, out of the population density count, uh, which I'm beginning to think maybe I somehow screwed that up really badly. But let's find out. Okay, so we can now do... Um, so we're still reading into buff here. And I think instead of doing this little magic, either of these little magics, Um, actually, we still should compute P count, but we're not going to print it out. We're going to print out, um, the values of buff and get, get, get sort of a handle on this now. See which of these is talking about big cities, um, which is not. And I think 10,000 should be enough if we're using random values. Um, let's go crazy and do a hundred thousand. Uh, so we'll find, hopefully, find one that's that's big enough. Um, in this ki in this case, I really do need to um, check to make sure I have haven't messed up the output. That is the coolest thing. Not what I meant to do, but still, of course, what I meant to uh, do here was not. Um, Uh, is not to print out the, the buffer values, but rather the ordinals of the buffer values. So hang on here. Um, this is probably something you should not do. I don't know enough to work. This basically converts all of the characters to their uh, ordinal values. 
And really, you should create a separate array to do that. You shouldn't change stuff in place, but you know. All right, awesome. So that, that looks good. I think we're ready to push it into a file and then sort by the var various columns to see if we can sort of get an idea of, of what these numbers are telling us. Although the rate we're going, maybe not. And that one actually took a few seconds, so let's see. The first, second columns are not interesting. The third column is where it starts to get interesting. Um, just for, we'll mix it up a little bit. Just, ooh, I didn't need to do that. Instead of doing less, we'll just get the first 20 values or something. Okay. So when this is 255, these are all pretty high numbers. 45, 37. Um, I mean, that 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 sounds like it should be, a, that's going to be somewhere in uh, Europe. Well, maybe I'll have to print out lat comma lon next time just to, and I really wish these places in Europe would do a better job of not being stupid. Um, somewhere there's a way to get an English map out of this thing, uh, but it might not be easy. So where are we here? We are in Mipos. No, that's where Balki Bartakamus lives. Um, well, that's that's a reasonably densely populated. You know, there's a reasonable number of people living there. It's not too bad then. Um, And f this, 44, this is going to be the United States, somewhere in the United States. So it does look like the first number maybe really is telling us um, something. Uh, so maybe I did have it right the first time. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not a divided by. Come on, USA! So we're in a big city, but we're a very little tight little part of the big city. Whoa, 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 whoa. Montpelier, is this Vermont that we're in? Yeah, it is. Okay. Well, hmm. Not super heavily populated. Um... So I don't really know if this is correct. Um, of course, we can try now doing it by the um, the last parameter, which is four, five, six, seven, and see if that does anything. Um, that's weird also didn't really work. One, two, three, four, five. I'm sorry, I meant the sixth parameter. That looks better, and what's interesting here is the highest number is 69, um, which makes it seem like this is, uh, this is going sort of down in order. Uh, you know, of, of highest to lowest, which would suggest that my doing it backwards is the correct way to do it. Uh, this over here, 32 lawn, I'm suspicious if I'm printing them in that order. Maybe I'm printing them in the other order. I'm oh, I am printing that long. <coughs> I'm a moron. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So maybe I'll print longitude then latitude, and I'll separate them with a comma, and then I will run BC pop center BC, and we're just going to overwrite temp five dot six five dot text because I don't like it. 
And now we can do a sort minus last one. Let's see what this is. So now if if my theory is correct, this should be a very highly populated place. Uh, three degrees. That's really, really far to the north, so I'm, I'm beginning to sort of question myself here. Um, yeah, this is like somewhere in... Wait, wait. That's latitude, long this is lat longitude, latitude, in the middle of nowhere. Nice. So actually, I was doing, I was, can two mistakes were canceling out earlier. Okay. So not getting a lot out of this last number here. I guess we can, uh, nope, so neither of those are what I meant to do. I meant to do this, except we're going to now go one, two, and do it by the third parameter. And um, I've actually messed things up enough. I don't think this is going to work. Okay. So, 254. Uh, 88 degrees longitude. This is still really, really far to the north. This is actually pretty, um, pretty decent. Okay. Well, I'm going to try, like, the fourth... See, now the problem is, if it's not the first or the second, there's something really funky going on here. Um, but who knows? Maybe we have moved to Funky Town. All right, so this is uh, 16 out of 14. This is actually, I think, London Town. Um... And I'm doing now longitude, comma latitude, right? Yeah. And so that's not correct. This is correct. And is this a fairly well populated town? Well, let's zoom in on the damn place. Oh yeah, this is looking good actually. It's Kazma in some place, Turkey, I think. Um, let's see here. Okay. So somehow this field might be the key, which suggests that the first field is giving us some uh, different information, but that doesn't really make sense either. So, um, now one way around all of this, that's really ugly, we can actually convert uh, TIFF files into uh, AAI grid files. Um, and that's actually a, another way to do it that, that, that makes it very clear what each value is. It doesn't uh, sort of go through this uh, four byte obfuscation. Um, so let's see what we have here. So what we could do, and this is very, very ugly, um, and I think for this I don't even need an output format because uh, output uh, type AAI grid, okay, format AAI grid, will automatically do the magic for me. And I'll just call it temp AAI. I think this will work. Unfortunately, it takes for freaking forever. Um, and the file that results is, is insanely huge. Uh, you can also convert this using um, image magic to text. And that is also uh, really, really ugly. Um, in theory, I could bring this up in display. Let me go, let me go, whoa! Didn't mean to background Emacs there. Meant to background the process. 
once again, this is the sort of uh, insane cleverness that I have done for myself that I probably should have my automatic uptime a little bit, uh, automatic raise time a little bit higher, but I don't. Okay, here we go. Um, so, it's an interesting question actually. How do you put that in the background? I don't care because I can always bring up another shell. Me want more shell. Oh crap, you can only have one shell going. That's not cool. Uh, Alright, we're going to kill this off because that's really going to be pretty ugly anyway. And let's go ahead and kill the... Holy crap, that's ugly. You know what? Maybe though we had enough of it. Uh, to actually do something with it. Uh, clearly, though, we have interrupted port. This this might not be the uh, yeah. This might not be the way to do it. Okay. Oh, wow, that actually caused my disk to uh, my CPU to be unhappy for a second there. All right. Um. One of the problems with a TIFF file this size, I don't think display will bring it up. Um, of course, if it does bring it up, it's going to be like hideously freaking slow and memory consuming. Oh wow, apparently well. One of the fun things about using a VM of course is that whoa, that is not bad at all. Oh yeah, I remember this now. This is um it won't actually show you anything on the uh on the uh on the big, th it'll show you the pan icon, but you can't actually see anything in the pan icon. So no matter where you go, you can't actually see anything. This is a, this was an issue with that. Um, uh, what you can do is um, you can view it half size. I don't think this still shouldn't work, but. And we're going to lose some information, but I'm trying to see what the uh, what the color data is here. Um, and it's a little bit confusing because really that looks like there's only 250 solely money, money, money. That is boy, you've never really seen the United States until you've seen it like this. All right. So here we have, um, yeah, see, and the problem here is this is actually just 256 shades of gray. Um, and, and yes, there's a joke about 50 shades of gray in here somewhere. Um, but of course, the population delineation is much, much, uh, is four bytes, not just one byte, which is what we're seeing here. So this is, um, this is a case where display is not really doing what it needs to be doing. But it does look nice, and if we do it another half size, again, um, we'll break the VM. No, we can. We might be able to see it a little bit more like the world, you know, like we kind of were used to seeing it. Or we really will break the. Uh, oh, here we are. So now it's still pretty big. Um, and here it just appears that we're just getting 256 colors, so this is not really super useful to us. And so we will go ahead and quit out of this. Okay, I've been streaming now for, oh my god, one hour and 40 minutes. I'm going to do some work on this myself. One of the things I'm going to do is, even though I said I didn't want to, is convert this to text, uh, which is using, by the way, image magic. It's not using, um, it's not using uh, GDAL Translate. Um,
And once again, I kind of did that beautiful thing of um, closing Emacs when I meant to close, just sort of put this in the background. Um, no, we don't want to open it. Um, there should be a way to create a new shell from here. Visit new file options. Okay, well, let's go back to this here shell. And let me make the... It's still really tiny, though. Let's go crazy! That's the biggest it gets? Eh, that's what she said. All right. So I think this is big enough for you guys to read. So I will be able to do some stuff from the actual the actual shell. Let's take a look here real quick. Um, I, that's a command I use a lot, but it's not available here. Okay. So this is going to basically uh, give us image magic pixel enumeration, six thousand five hundred thirty-five shades of gray. So now I'm actually worried. Uh, we might have to go full AAI grid on this because even this many, um, even 600,000, you know, even that many number is not enough to hold four bytes. Four bytes is going to be basically uh, that many different values. And obviously it's floating points, so we're, we're doing a little bit more than that. Um, so I do not know what has gone wrong. I do know I've been streaming for much longer than I wanted to, so I will say goodnight to you all and uh, have a pleasant, I don't know, just something. I'll be back later, maybe. Who knows? Don't care. Bye.